What astounding words! The God who created everything that is. The God who said, let there be light, and separated the light from the darkness. The God who created the sun, the moon, and the stars. The God who created this planet, separated the land from the waters, who created all that is and lives and breathes. This God who uttered the word of creation, this word of God came in human flesh, was born in Bethlehem, wrapped in swaddling clothes, and laid in a manger in a cave. John, the evangelist, the youngest of the ones called to be followers of Jesus, began his journey at the Sea of Galilee. With his older brother James, he responded to the call of Jesus, follow me. And somehow he found his way into the inner circle of Jesus' disciples. Over and over again we hear Peter, James, and John went with Jesus to do all sorts of things. They were the witness to a young girl who was raised from the dead. They were there on the mountain of transfiguration when the word of God in human flesh, Jesus began to shine with the light, the brightness of his true identity before his crucifixion. And at his crucifixion, depicted at the icon in the Founders Chapel, he stands at the foot of the cross with Mary, Jesus' mother, And there is that intimate conversation where Jesus says to John, Behold your mother. And to Mary, Behold your son. And John takes her into his home from that day forward. John spends time with the mother of our Lord after the resurrection. He's part of the inner circle of apostles. And yet he uniquely, as guardian of Mary, has access to great and deep spiritual wisdom. And the fact that he began his journey as a young man, as a follower of Jesus, and the fact that he is the only apostle who was not killed for his faith and lived to a ripe old age, that gave him time with the Holy Spirit to reflect, to ponder, and to write down words that are so crucial to our faith. As the apostles began to decide where it was they were going to go to spread the good news of Jesus, John was given Asia, and he found his place in the modern nation of Turkey, in the ancient city of Ephesus. And in Ephesus, he had time to reflect upon what would become the Gospel of John. At one point, there was an attempt to kill him for his faith, which was unsuccessful. And the emperor then sent him into exile, into the island of Patmos. And at Patmos, this tiny island off the coast of Greece and Turkey, He evangelized the local population and spent much time in prayer in a cave. And in that cave, as depicted on the front of your bulletin and on this holy icon, with Prochorus, his assistant, he received the vision that we now call Revelation. And as he received the vision, Prochorus wrote down the words. What would the Christian life be without John. It would be completely different because he is the one that came up and recognized the truth of the fact that it is the light of God, the God who was not allowing Moses to see his face, who wanted us to see his face, and who came in human flesh in Jesus so that we could see him face to face, so that we could understand God's plan for our lives. And the plan of God is simple. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood. 
The word became flesh and moved into the neighborhood so that the world could see that God is full of light, not darkness. And that God is full of love, not judgment and hatred. And that every place that darkness, judgment and hatred live, God comes with light and forgiveness and wholeness and love. The people who founded this parish so many years ago chose the name of John. And when a parish chooses a saint to be its patron, they are making a specific request. We who believe that in Jesus, in our baptism, we don't die with, even though we cross through the portal of death, understand that all the saints before us are cheering us on. It's as if we are on the floor of a great arena in life and all the saints who have come before us are in the stands saying, you can be victorious, you can do this in the name of Jesus. And so by choosing the name of John, our spiritual ancestors asked St. John to be our primary cheerleader, to pray for us to Jesus, that as successive generations of Christians in this place move into the neighborhood, that we might be successful in our calling. John the Evangelist, John the Seer and Great Vision Seer of Revelation, John the Beloved One of Jesus, is the one who prays for you and for me and for this congregation that we might share God's light and God's love, that we might go into the dark places of this world, to go to the places where people are broken and hurting and say, you are forgiven, you are loved, you can be transformed. God's presence, God's light and God's love is available to you because God comes not in judgment. But God comes in peace and love, forgiveness, hope, and light. Blessed John, pray for us. Pray that we, in this new year, may move into the neighborhood with the light and love of the Word made flesh. Jesus, the Son of God.